From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2267, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. We'll begin this week with a big de-expedition update, and that can only mean Bouvet Island, but two de-expeditions? The date is set, December 15th of this year, for the Rebel DX Group to depart Cape Town, South Africa, for Bouvet Island and the 3Y0I activation. The team said it's ready as ever, following the cancellation of their 2019 de-expedition, when they were within sight of the remote island and had to turn back during a cyclone for safety reasons. The team of eight, led by Polish de-expeditioner Dom 3Z9DX, expects to be on Bouvet for as many as 30 days, and will operate eight stations on 160 through 6 metres using CW, SSB, FT4, Strug, FT8, RITI and operations through the Qatar Oscar 100 satellite. The team has continued to appeal for donations to meet its remaining need for $32,000. Meanwhile, the Intrepid DX group has announced that they'll be activating the island as well, using the call sign 3Y0J. Their 20-day stay on the island is set for January 2023. The team's immediate goal is to continue fundraising to meet their budget of $764,000 before their planned trip aboard the MV Braveheart. The Rebel DX Group, in response to the other team's announcement, said in a press release, quote, We would like to wish the recently announced 3Y0J Bouvet D expedition all the best for a successful activity in 2023. There's enough space for even three more activities from 3Y0 land. We know how much detailed planning goes into a project like this and cross fingers for them. End quote. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm John Williams, VK4, JJW. Hexbeam users and DXers alike are marking the loss of a popular and prominent figure. Waldy, SP7 IDX has become a silent key. An amateur radio operator considered one of the world's foremost makers of Hexbeam antennas has become a silent key. The death of Valdi was reported on the DXWorld.net website. Reportedly recovering from COVID-19, he suffered a fatal heart attack on the 4th of April. His QTH in southeast Poland was also the company headquarters for his successful hex beam antenna, used widely by de-expeditioners around the world. He was a well-known de-expeditioner, most particularly in the islands on the Air Awards scheme. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Boot, G4NJH. The Youth Working Group of IARU Region 1 has announced a new contest. Young amateurs in IARU Region 1 are hoping for a big turnout in May for the debut of the Yota Contest, an initiative designed to get more young amateurs on the air around the world. The 12-hour competition will be held three times a year, with the first one happening on the 22nd of May. There are eight categories, including ones for hams 25 and younger, and the contest exchange will be the operator's ages. Activity will be on 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metre bands in CW and SSB modes. The later contests will be in July and December. The Youth Working Group has arranged the event with the cooperation of the Hungarian Amateur Radio Society. Details are available on the website shown in this week's Newsline script at arnewsline.org. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Ed Durant, DD5LP. Another reminder, the nominating period for the 2021 Newsline Bill Pasternak WA6ITF Young Hem of the Year Award is now open. You'll find the nominating form and all information on our website, arnewsline.org. The presentation will take place at the Huntsville Ham Fest in August. You'll find more on the Huntsville Ham Fest at hamfest.org. And we look forward to seeing you there. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With John Williams, VK4JJW, Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, Ed Durant, DD5LP, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the News Desk in New York, and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW. 7-3, we'll see you next time here on Ham Nation.